Now before we get started, if you are not a hardworking, safety focused fashionista like me, you may not want to watch this video. But if that intrigues you before, after, I'll show you how to do it. So it recently occurred to me that I wear my Crocs for everything. And nothing bad has happened yet, but I do try to take safety seriously. And last weekend, I nearly dropped a 200, look at that shine. I nearly dropped a 200 pound gate on my foot. Barely missed crushing my toes and I was wearing these Crocs and I thought, well, I've really got to step up my game. Also, these are excellent entry points for uh, sand burrs and goat heads, so. God dang it. Ugh. Every time I go to check my bees, I end up getting stuck right in the toes, and this will also help with that. So, my family loves Crocs. We probably have I don't know, at least 10 Crocs in this house. We wore them all the time and I slowly became a fan. And like I said, I wanted, I need something safe. I need something I can wear all the time. I don't worry about crushing my toes. So I went to YouTube like I do with everything and I wanted to see what other people had done. Much to my surprise, most people were taking their Crocs or the only ones I found and they were creating a shell. They were like making a a steel cover. In fact, there was a guy, what's his YouTube name? Almost Made or Made Almost or something. He did some really cool stuff. Um, he put a lot of time and effort into making a fantastic shell, but that's not the look I'm, I'm after. I mean, why would I want to cover this up? I mean, I wear these for a reason. They look great and they're comfortable. Uh, and, I mean, think about it. Steel toe work boots. They don't put steel on the outside, the steel's on the inside. So that's what I wanted to do. Um, so what I decided was, well, how do I get, how do I make steel to fit inside here? Well, I remembered I have this, this is like an eight year old pair of rubber steel toe boots. I bought these for when I was doing a lot of work um, in wet environments. And uh, I decided I'm gonna cut the steel toe out of this grind it down, cut it down to fit, polish it up, stick it in there. And yeah, you know, you've got to, you've got to sacrifice a pair of boots, but like I said, I've, I've worn these in the last five years, probably I've worn these twice, almost every day. So these are getting the knife. And uh, because they're both size 12s, it won't take much modification to make this work. So we're gonna slice it open, take her out, Polish it up and shove her in. Alright, y'all already know what's about to happen to this guy. We will extract the toe from the donor. I really have just been carrying these old boots around forever. Never use them. They're very uncomfortable. And because they don't ventilate at all, they make your feet sweat really bad. And even when it's cold outside, you don't really want your feet to sweat. At least I don't. Now he's talking to us. Just gotta get the toe out. Actually, got a layer of some fabric material, and then there's a foam layer. Well, it looks like it's glued along the bottom. 
Voila. That was it. How long did that take? A minute? So what I like about this, you could leave this uh, kind of this dark gray if you want. But I like the shiny. I do like that it comes with this kind of hard plastic tapered piece uh, because it protects you from that kind of hard edge of the metal. So now what we'll do, we've got to cut this down so it'll fit. You'll see that the Crocs, like this is much too big. I tried to put this in here earlier without cutting it down and it got stuck and there's this big bulbous portion. We want to maintain the profile of the shoe, if at all possible. So, we'll cut this down, we'll grind it down, make it nice and shiny, and then I'll show you the next steps. So what you wanna do is take your steel toe blank, or steel toe piece, and mark around all the way around that you need to cut off. Now this is gonna vary, I can't give you a measurement because it's gonna depend on what kind of steel toe you use. Um, but what I found is that you really only want, it goes from about three quarters of an inch in the toe to about, a, uh, about an inch over kind of like your metatarsals um, or where it kind of starts to meet the actual base of your foot. Um, and also, you know, the length of your steel toe is gonna to vary as well. So. I measured it how it works with with my piece I'm gonna put this in the bench vise and I'm gonna take my angle grinder and we're just gonna cut along this line make sure you have safety glasses That easy guys so I got a little off there but that actually might work out because this is the toes this is the toe side and the toe side needs more room anyway so next I will take my angle grinder with the flat disc and we will we'll clean up these edges and stuff make it nice and smooth and Looking good, looking good. Next step, I want to take the paint off. If you have never used one of these poly strip wheels before, it will change your world. I'll put a link in the description if you don't know where to get these. You can pick them up on Amazon or Harbor Freight sells them pretty cheap too. These are amazing for removing paint and rust. Battery's dead. Battery's always dead. And the battery's always dead. See how good that works? The other nice thing about these poly strip wheels or that they are not, uh, one, they don't get your material super hot, so you can touch it like this little rubber piece here. It's not damaging it, and it doesn't kick off a lot of sparks, so really cool tool. I now have two matching shiny stainless steel, not stainless steel, steel toe inserts for my Crocs. I've literally 
spent more time in the bathroom thinking about making this video than I've spent making it. So now I'm going to put them in and uh, we'll do the next step. We need to finish these so that they don't rust. You have a few options. You can seal with a clear kind of urethane sealant, um, which is probably going to be what I do. But I think I'm going to put them in the shoe first, clean the shoe, the croc, and then I might seal the entire croc. We'll see how that works. I'll be honest, I'm a little nervous about this. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to take the crop. I'm going to take the insert. I'm going to put it in here as, hard, as far as I can. One of the problems is, no, that's not a problem. You know, one of the unique things about the croc is that it's kind of got this unique toe shape. That's not really round. It's kind of a, I don't know, weird. It's like you got a giant toe. So they don't, the profiles don't match exactly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this shoved in here as far as I can and then I'm gonna use the heat gun here and I'm going to try to slowly warm the croc until it kind of accepts the steel toe. And I'm nervous because I don't want to melt my croc. And I don't, I've never done this before, so let's see what happens. I'm gonna start off on a low temperature, 120. I'm gonna let it sit here and get warm. And then we'll see if it becomes pliable enough to kind of really take the shape of this steel toe. So what I'm doing here, I put this little fan tip on my heat gun. It's got a, a digital readout on the back and it lets you kind of select your temperature. I went ahead and put it to 240. Because that's kind of just, just barely hot enough for my skin to tolerate. And in fact, that's too hot for my skin. So I figure that'll kind of give the Crocs a slow warm up. We don't want to hit it with too much heat too fast. We just want to get nice and hot. We'll shove the steel in there. And then I think once we get the, the steel shoved in there all the way to where it kind of makes a nice shape, nice snug fit, then we'll throw them in the freezer and let that, that this foam rubber material shrink up around it. And I bet you we'll have a nice, good stuck toe in the crop. You know what I mean. We're going to go up to 260. Because even though that air's hot, these crocs are not. Well, that's heating up. Let's go do a crop count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Where are they, bear? 13, 14, 15, yeah, how do you get 15, that's a good question. Pump it to 280, they're warm, they are softer now, Let's see if I can shove one of those in there better. I'm gonna take this one. Oh yeah, that actually is much more pliable. I was able to shove that right to the very end. Because the shapes, the contours don't match exactly, this little, your big toe area is not perfect. In fact, look, I can just, that slides around. That doesn't hold very tight. So I was hoping that heating that up would fix that. And maybe it will. So we'll try this. And we can make modifications as we go. I'm gonna give them a test run this evening. So tonight, I'm going to put these in the freezer, let them cool down, maybe contract a little bit. And then tonight, I'm supposed to be taking my wife and kids to dinner, and I'll wear these. And we'll see how they hold up. I will report back. So I know I said that I was going to maybe clean these up, get them nice and polished, put a finish on them, and then kind of permanently secure them in the crock. So two days ago, two and a half days ago, I finished to this point and I decided I wanted to wear them for a while just to see how it fit. Well, I have worn these for 
you know, two and a half days straight. I, uh, I worked in them all day on Sunday. We, we hauled tree branches up from the, from the property up to the curb. We, uh, I played football in them. Today I drove 13 hours straight with these on. I went to a birthday party with them, a children's birthday party. And I went out to dinner on Saturday night. And I must say that I kind of like them the way they are. So they're not perfect yet. I guess we'll call this version one. Uh, and if anything changes, I'll uh, maybe do a version two. But as it sits now, I kind of like them. I'm going to roll with these. Uh, if you have any questions about the process or, uh, you know, the materials I use or the tools, I mean, they're all pretty basic. Or if you have any suggestions, let me know. We've got so many crops in the house. Yeah, I have a feeling I'll be making some some smaller versions of these for the boys. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Appreciate the comments. Bye.